Today I'm going to take you on a hardware tour of the Silicon Graphics 320 Visual Workstation. This machine is seen by many to be one of the ugly ducklings in the SGI lineup as it does not contain MIPS CPUs and is not able to run the IRIX operating system, but is instead run by Windows NT4 or Windows 2000 and makes use of Intel x86 CPUs. Even though this machine is based on an Intel system, it is definitely a thoroughbred SGI machine as its memory architecture is a proprietary unified memory architecture very similar to that found in an O2 and the system runs a PROM instead of a BIOS that is found in PCs. In past videos I've demonstrated gaming performance on this machine as well as blender test results and I've also managed to render a rather complex model of the Edson fountain pen on this machine. So as far as I'm concerned this is definitely an SGI that you do want to have in your collection. I'm going to start off by taking you through the machine's front panel. To the top right hand side of the front panel you've got the system's power on LED which eliminates green when the machine is running. Just below that you've got the system's front door and if you push towards the bottom of the door it slides down automatically. This reveals the system's drives. Towards the top you've got a stiffy drive. Just below that you've got a blanked off drive bay. Just below that you've got the system's CD-ROM drive and to the right of that you've got the system's power on button as well as the reset button. In order to close the door you just pull upwards on the handle and it clicks neatly into place. Just below that you've got the Cube Silicon Graphics logo and it says Silicon Graphics 320. On the right hand bottom side of the front panel you've got the Intel badge. This particular badge shows a Pentium 2 logo as the machine was originally equipped with Pentium 2's but it's now been upgraded with two 1 gigahertz Pentium 3 copper mine CPUs. To the left hand side of the front panel you've got the machine's intake vent and this is covered by this blue shroud which actually forms part of the left hand side of the machine. Taking a look at the machine's rear panel, to the top right hand side you've got a barcode which is the machine's serial number. To the left of that you've got the power supply's exhaust fan and to the right of that you've got a standard kettle plug with an input voltage selector. Just below that you've got the machine's system fan which vents air out of the region where the motherboard sits. Just below this you've got the locking handle for the system's removable cover and just to the left hand side of this you've got a hole which you can insert a locking pin through preventing you from moving the locking handle. Below this you have the system's label indicating that this machine was in fact assembled in the US. Below this you have three PCI slots, the middle one is occupied by the SCSI controller card as this machine is fitted with a 15,000 RPM 36 GB SCSI disk. Next there are two S-Video jacks, one for outputs and one for inputs. Above that two RCA video jacks, one for outputs and one for inputs. Above that two RCA audio jacks for the right hand channel and above that two RCA audio jacks for the left hand channel. Above that there are two 3.5mm jacks, one for headphone output as well as one for the microphone input. Above this is a standard VGA port and above the VGA port is a DB9 serial port. And to the right of this is a parallel port. Next there are two USB ports which would normally be used for a USB keyboard and mouse. I have used a Vulcan USB to PS2 converter which allows me to use one of my normal PS2 SGI keyboards and mice with this machine, allowing me to free up the secondary USB port. Next there is a Firewire port. This machine was initially meant to have two Firewire ports but SGI had an issue with the secondary Firewire port so when they ship these machines they simply put a blank over the upper Firewire port. To the right of the Firewire port there is a blank which covers the space where the flat panel connector would usually sit and to the left of that is a standard twisted pair Ethernet port. Next I'm going to cover the internal components which make this machine tick. Now that the system's side panel has been removed, the air intake on the left hand side of the front panel is now clearly visible. The airflow coming in through this intake is supplied to a shrouded fan sitting directly behind the front panel which blows cool air directly onto the CPU's heatsinks. This system is equipped with two Intel Pentium 3 copper mine CPUs running at 1.1 GHz. If you want to run one of these machines in a dual CPU configuration, you need to slot one of these optional VRM modules. The system's Cobalt graphics system sits below this heatsink which is cooled by an additional fan. 
This system features a unified memory architecture that makes use of these proprietary memory modules. Here we have the connector on the motherboard which the optional flat panel connector card slots into. Here we have the location of the battery which supplies power to the system's real-time clock. The system is equipped with three PCI slots, one of which runs at 33 MHz and the other two at 66 MHz. All three of them run at 3.3 volts as opposed to the 5 volts which are used by most other manufacturers. Next we have the SCSI controller card which is slotted into one of the 66 MHz PCI-X slots. This card allows the machine to be equipped with a 15,000 RPM 36GB SCSI drive making use of a 50-pin to 80-pin SCSI converter. Next we have the system's drive bays which are populated with the system CD-ROM drive as well as the stiffy drive with an empty bay in between them. Lastly we come to the system's power supply unit which has no label on it to depict its rating or output voltages. The output does however have ferrite rings around it to reduce noise. Looking at the machine booting, take note of the fact that the screen has a green tint when in the PROM and as soon as Windows starts to load the color returns to normal. Here ends the hardware tour of the Silicon Graphics 320 Visual Workstation. One of the most beautiful computers ever produced in my opinion and one well worth having in your collection. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks very much for watching.